this. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's right here at the bottom. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And I'll Thank you. We like. I got my watch, but I like a five-minute warning. Okay. Good morning, everybody. How are you? How was your first presentation? The keynote gr was great this morning, wasn't it? It was a really great presentation. Um, my name is Angie Dick. I am an instructional designer with uh, the College of Ag and ETS. And I'm here today to present um, the three speakers that we have. And um, so first and foremost, welcome. And I'm delighted to uh, introduce this session titled uh, Lumberjack I Stand Taking the Classroom into the Forest. And our presenters for this session is Coranda. Is that correct? It's Coranda. Coranda. Anyway, because <laughs> it's mispronounced the first time. No Bartol, Susan Lang, uh, Craig Houghton, oh, yeah. and um, I believe Kelly Ketterman is also the student that helped you guys out. Correct. Um, and so they're all from the Mount Alto campus, so they're not from University Park, so it's nice to have um, the branch campuses right. coming here. And Karanda Cor teaches medical surgery nursing concepts at, at Mount Alto and has also taught leadership and behavioral health nursing health assessment for the RN and BS program, trauma and critical care, women's health, and she's also the campus coordinator for both associate's degree, RN and BS degree in nursing. Her clinical background is in emergency medicine and pre-hospital services. She works in private practice as a nurse practitioner with a local internal medicine physician group. Um, Susan is a laboratory coordinator for the nursing program and nursing faculty that teaches both levels of the associate degree program. And Craig is an instructor and the program coordinator for forest technology. Craig has been teaching um, since 1993. So um, let's uh, just give him a big round of applause and let's see what they have to for us today. Thank you. Well, good morning. Well, it's a big classroom. I like to wander around. So um, if you can't hear me, you just have to say I can't hear you. Um, but I usually have a booming voice. Because that comes from, you know, yelling at students, no, <laughs> no, 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 anyway. Um, we're here to present something that is really exciting at Mon Alto, and it's death by PowerPoints, you're all dead. Okay, we're all dead right now, but we're going to wake you up here in a little bit, because we have some other things that we would like you to do. But we wanted to give you some idea of how this project got started. And just um, to introduce our other person with us today, this is iStan. iStan is a high fidelity uh, simulator, human patient simulator, designed by uh, biomedical uh, engineers out of Sarasota, Florida. And um, he is completely wireless. And he pretty much responds physiologically to anything or any situation. And what that means is if a student doesn't open their airway fast enough, he crashes. If they don't start an IV and give them fluids fast enough, he crashes. If they get a certain medication and it's in, uh, incorrect, he crashes. So the reason we have him is because we want our students, our nursing students, predominantly for me, is we want them making mistakes on him and not real patients. Okay? But um, we wanted to take it a step further, and that's where forestry comes in. I guess I don't have a, I just have to do the next. This will actually be our third year to do this exercise, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, two, two good years ago, I approached um, Craig, because he is our forestry department coordinator, and nursing and forestry are the two biggest um, programs on our campus, okay? If you've never been there, you should come visit us, because we're the most beautiful campus in the Penn State system. By that, and all the, we also have the oldest building in the campus system, Weasling Hall, which you'll, well, I don't know if we have it in here. No. So, Stan is wireless. Susan and I wanted to see how wireless he really was. And how better to do that than to take him out of the classroom and put him in the woods and see how he gets. So we took Stan out in the woods. And our objective, and, and I'm just gonna go over the objectives quick, because Craig will talk about the forestry industry in a little bit. 
But we wanted to look at the forestry uh, students' response to basic first aid and CPR. Because they have to have those skills and they need to know them. Then we wanted to look at EMA and 911. Because in our community, especially last year, they went to a whole new um, system, radio system, and they wanted to test their capabilities for the 911 system. We wanted to look at our paramedics ability to come and do the ALS piece and do the leadership piece um, with fire, EMS, and rescue. So we brought them in um, from different or, uh, yeah, community uh, areas, which you'll see in a little bit. And the piece we added last year is we added our RMDBS students. They have a capstone project that they have to do, or capstone course. And their role was to write objectives that we designed in mock ER in our nursing lab. And they ran the mock ER where Stan ends up from his injuries. Thank you, Craig. We also wanted to evaluate Skype because we wanted to, and we did, project what was going on in the field back into the classroom to the students. We wanted them to watch real time what was happening, and we had objectives for them to write to. What do you think? Would you think about hypothermia? Would you, what hazards would you think? What would you expect to happen next? And those kind of things to get them involved. Once we got him out of the field, then our IT department switched it to live video feed in the mock ER. Okay, what are the nurses doing? How are they triaging their patients? What is the, the physician? What are the nurses' roles? What's x-ray doing? You know, those kind of things um, so that they could get an idea of that management. Then we wanted to look at the whole um, coordination from basic to advanced. And it's very nice as Penn State, we have our own helicopter. So we just call Life Kitty and Hershey, and they come and play. And so we wanted to see how they would act, um, and we brought Lifeline down to load him. Now, if he didn't go anywhere, I would have jumped on the helicopter. And then we wanted to do debriefing. And anybody that uses simulation, and I don't know your backgrounds, but when we're using this high, defin uh, high patient, um, definition um, patient simulation, it's very important that you debrief once something is over. To talk about what really went well and some things that you'd like to make different. Okay. So, I'm going to turn it over here to Craig because he's the one that designed the scenario. Yeah, I teach in a forest technology degree, two-year associate degree at Mon Alto, and we have sophomore, freshman. So after the freshman year, they take a four-week, what we call summer camp. It's a four-week session. We're in the woods with them, uh, nine hours a day, five days a week. We teach them chainsaw safety, how to fell a tree. And they set up a logging operation. We have equipment that they run. And it's a dangerous operation. They have to take first aid and CPR, American Heart Association. So this is one way we thought for many years, what would happen if we had an accident? Would our students be able to respond? What happens if one of the instructors get hurt? Could they get us out of the woods and help us? That might have been the primary concern. <laughs> but, uh, so pairing up using a dummy that's a smart one and uh, wireless, they can do a lot of different scenarios. Uh, students have to, let's see, let me back up. So we, they get their first aid CPR, introduce them to stand because some get a little bit weird about how human he looks and acts. That would be in the classroom. And we bring them out. Uh, they're broken into crews of four and we really don't tell them what the scenario is but they're in crews in the woods and one of the crews has Stan as a crew member. He gets hurt and then we just see how they respond. We all have walkie-talkies and uh, they have a protocol that they have to follow, get a hold of the instructors, someone goes and calls 911 and we go through this whole scenario. So this past year, uh, Stan, we blow a whistle, the accident begins at 8 in the morning. Uh, Stan had a branch fall on him. He cut his leg as well, so he might have had a neck injury. We don't really know and we see how the students respond. That's the, they're really the first people to see Stan in the first response. Then after 911, the whole EMTs, ambulance, lifeline come into play. So he cut his leg, 
in and out of consciousness, and that's what Susan controls to see whether he's blinking and breathing. Uh, and we'll show a slide a little bit later. There's a voice. He has a microphone. So we have another student sitting with her actually responding to the responders. So he's found by his teammates, and we continue the scenario from there. Uh, as I said, it's a dangerous operation. Not all, actually very few of our students go into logging, but as a forester, you're going to be working with loggers. They're doing the forest management on the ground. Uh, and they should know how to operate a saw. Technicians do uh, thinning operations, what's called timber stand improvement, so they do use chainsaws, or they oversee people that are, are using chainsaws. Uh, the logging industry, woods workers, have a lot higher uh, death rate than any other operation other than or, uh, occupation, maybe fishing, farming, and logging are the top three. And then chainsaw wounds, uh, they're ugly, and how do you treat those? So we want to, we wear, students wear protective chaps, which can reduce the damage. Uh, they do work quite well. Hard hats, steel toes, uh, protective gloves they wear to try to, you know, if there was an accident, to try to reduce the, the impact or reduce the level of injury. And you can read it's not a cheap hospital bill. So <laughs> we want to try that on a mannequin first before we try it out on a student or instructor. <laughs> our voice was one of our students, Michael Wells, uh, Marine Corps, did a tour in Iraq. Uh, the year before that, we had an Army medic who was a voice, so he was very uh, dynamic and knew how to play it up and, and pretend he was going out of consciousness. Very good. This year we have another student who's going to be the voice. Another uh, armed services student. And then I'll turn it over to Susan to explain a little bit about iStand. Um, while iStand is wireless, um, it makes it great to go into the forest or into another classroom if you want to have an accident um, injury for students to understand the importance of safety. A little planning goes into it. Uh, there are a good number of canned scenarios, um, but they may not quite match up with what you want to do. I don't have a canned scenario that says logging accident. Um, so creativity uh, between the different professors, uh, talking about what they want to occur and what they want their students' objectives to be. And after that, we sit down with the computer and we look at what's going to change with Stan and how Stan's going to behave. Um, we. Um, I don't want to be beside the mannequin. I don't want them to realize as so much that I'm controlling or helping control what's going on. So with the computer, I tend to stand back, um, try to find a brush pile or a tree to stand behind so they don't see me. And uh, the voice of Stan goes with me because uh, while they may have some training um, as a medic, they may not um, have a lot of training. And I may be coaching them on the fly because you never know what kind of questions um, students are going to ask. Um, from that piece. Um, one of the things we've had a little trouble with is the communication because I'm, I'm further away than the scenario going on. I'm hearing what the, act, what the students are saying to Stan, what questions they're asking Stan. Um, the past two years we've used a walkie-talkie system and when the students get really involved in the scenario and they're keeping his head stable or applying pressure, they forget to hold down the walkie-talkie button and I don't know what the question was. So then Stan's not responding. Um, this year we've moved to a different uh, mic relay system and we're going to see if that works out a little bit better um, so that the kids can, the students can stay in, uh, stay in the scenario and not have to be concentrating on keeping the communication lines open. Um, you have to be conscientious of, of what wireless means though. Um, up in the woods, uh, the first year, um, I was coming down off the hill. I wanted to be down ahead of them. And um, I got too many big trees between me and them and Stan uh, disconnected. But the students were really on the ball because they had been talking to him and looking at him. And the next thing I hear the words, Stan's not blinking. Stan, are you okay? Stan's not breathing. 
you know, and the students went right into their CPR. Wasn't the plan from the instructor's perspective, but the students did jump in and do what we would have wanted them to do. I backed up a couple steps and he, he had a, a very quick recovery. Um, <laughs> because that's not where he wanted him to go. But from that perspective, it gives the kids, I keep saying kids and I know I should say students, it keeps giving those students a really good opportunity to do and practice, but it's a mannequin. Um, and just very similar, um, while he is wireless and he has a battery and all that runs through, when we get back down to the ER, um, we've been out for several hours at that point. I come back, I have a small little control booth that I use, and I come back in, I plug everything back up, and then I run the scenario from there for whatever we've decided to do in the ER piece of it. How much does it cost? I forgot. I, I tell people, but I don't actually remember the truth. He's $125,000. So it's not just a mannequin that you no. see in a department no. store. No. He, but he was a good investment. <laughs> but he is not, he's not a cheap guy. <laughs> so. Yeah, Corona talked a little bit about the preparation. So we, we've yeah. been having some meetings uh, this year. I think you want to break his hip or something. And we, Susan wants to put him up in a tree and, well, and we, hang we him in the tree. Well, we discussed it um, as an option. No, um, the EMS had requested that we pin him so that they could practice right. um, with an entrapment. Extracting him. So, um, so, you know, everyone gets input on what the objectives are going to be for the year, and then we make sure that we can do it. Yeah, so the nursing students are very familiar with Stan because they've been using simulation for a while. So they're really pretty comfortable with how he works and, and, and how he responds. Forestry students, um, and I'm going to tell you, they have about a 15 minute introduction to him, that is all. They come in, they touch him, they say hello to him, they lift him because he's 125 pounds dead weight. So he's very heavy. Um, and he's very heavy in his torso because that's where all of his um, electronics are. And then um, we do get fire, EMS, rescue, and EMA involved. We want to know what they want to do, um, how many personnel they want to train, um, what they are, their expectations. Again, we do uh, involve air medical because they want some training related to uh, LZ zone safety and things like that. And then we involve as many people as we can on the campus. We involve plant operations. We involve police services if we need to. We've involved IT because um, they are helping us with the technology yeah. piece um, as far as communication. So our, our, um, I'll let, this was our classroom, okay? And then I can let Craig fill yeah. in um, the blanks. Yeah. We have our summer camp. Our campus is right there. next to the Michaud State Forest. The first and, uh, store. So we get permission from uh, DCNR to use that area for an accident. Oh, we haven't had any of their foresters train with us. I'm not sure we can convince them to do that. But right on campus, or next to campus. Right. So then they pick him up, and then we travel to the next star at the top, which is our science technology building, and that's where the mock ER was located. So we got him stabilized enough, and then he was transported over here to the women's softball field, which is an LZ zone for him to be picked up by Life Lion. So we had three different strategic areas that we covered for the day. So, um, some outcomes, Skype reception, in and out. And we think, um, you know, a lot of it is the woods, obviously. We're exploring some other things. Um, but it was still interesting um, that the students, if it froze, they could still hear things going on. So it wasn't completely that they, they, didn't, they got disconnected. Our cell phones, we think, are gonna work a little better because they recently put a sub tower up. So we think that will improve. Um, I stand's limitations, Susan talked about, can't be around the big tree or he gets cut off. So we have to have a, a site. Landing zone safety became an issue this year. The first year we did really good. This year, this past year, I think we have more people. And those that are familiar with helicopter safety, there's certain ways you have to approach the helicopter. There's certain things you have to worry about, debris flying and stuff. And we got the, um, the crew was a little antsy because somebody started back towards the rear rover and we're like, you know, come this way. Because you never go, you always keep the line of sight with the pilot. So we are bringing them down to actually do safety zone teaching next week. Nursing, forestry, and whoever else wants that update. Um, the mock ED objectives were met, I think, 
But one of the things we're going to do, and Susan's going to lead that, is we actually have a video that Kelly put together. And we're going to show you how it unrolls. It's just about 10 minutes. We want you to see how it played out. Well, and then she's going to ask you some things. Barriers. Skype was the barrier. Yeah. Communication. His voice is still a little sketchy. Um, we're going to involve our, um, uh, I would say drama department, but that's not correct. It's media, and yeah. they're gonna, we're going to try to get a boom mic so that we can pick up more. Because his sound. voice is not loud enough on the video. So right. That was that. probably the bigger barriers. Um, and then um, this is our ER. This is our ER crew that volunteered. I want you to just to kind of watch, take a look at this guy and remember his face. Because when we play the video, I want you to watch him too. He'll be a big player. <laughs> and he's a big player. But then I want to just tell you some things. Um, in the debriefing, we get together. We talk about really what went well and what we need to change. Like, don't come to the back of the helicopter. Those kind of things. But we also have them fill out a paper. And these are actual statements from the students. Okay? Um, what they thought about it. They didn't realize it would be lifelike. Um, they thought it was really unique to Mon Alto. Um, they were less concerned about what would happen if an accident actually happened. And um, they thought it was great cross-training because forestry is not typically married to nursing. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't work in the same industry. We might get caught up if somebody's injured, but we don't typically train together, so they liked that. Um, and this was our this was most of them for the day after we were done. Took pictures. Um, first, uh, AS students, r and band students, forestry students, IT, the crew from Lifeline, Fire D, and I trust you. Took a big picture, so that was fun. I'm just and these are just the individuals that helped us from our local community. We are considered rural, so response time to our area, the closest um, would be about 20 minutes to get to where we're at. It's not bad, but um, where we were at was remote. Um, and then we had Lifeline and our EMA. And this is their little mobile command center. This is actually what they would take out in a real event, something would happen in the community. It's set up just like a 911 center that you go to that's a permanent. So they wanted to try that to make sure it's still working. This is Mon Alto. We're very pretty. Um, and then we worked with the bor Borough of Forestry, which is wonderful. Yeah. And then it's not complete without all of your videographers. Kelly was our videographer along with the, um, James down there at the bottom. They were all over the place. And then the gentleman up there is our soon-to-be-retired geography um, teacher who loves doing photography, and he was just like everywhere. So I had to give him accolades too. George. So Kelly couldn't come today, but she uh, was a forestry student or a graduate. So she's been through the training and also is an excellent videographer and figured out iMovie very well. And <laughs> so made all the movies, also putting different footage together. And, and uh, if you were here, we'd give her a big hand, but we're going to give her a gift when we get back. <laughs> I think that's it, right? We just, any any questions, questions before we go into the video? The reason we like to present this, and we presented it at some national and international simulation places because typically simulation is in a classroom very inside the box and we're trying to make it not inside the box where we want to offer it to anybody that thinks they can use it forestry could use it i think police services could use it i think ot pt students could use it um, i think that art students could use it uh, theater students could use it i think you could use them for a lot of things just have to be able to be willing to think outside that normal box of what we use them for. Anything at all? All right, then we're going to do the video. I can get that. Okay. Just and then you get you can lead in. Okay. Um, one of the things we always do with simulation, if it's inside the classroom with a small group of students, or this our larger simulation at the end of the year, is we have that debriefing time. Now, from the start of the accident through the ER. Um, piece was about two hours long, so we've cut that down to about 10, 10 minutes. And as you watch the video, um, there are things that have, would have happened that the students would have been seeing or watching, and then we would have talked to them about if they had been in the situation, what would they have done, or is there anything that they would like to see or have us do that would make it more realistic, um, things like that that we ask them. And uh, 
what worked, what didn't work kind of thing. So that's what we're going to ask you. So as you watch the video, um, if you can kind of put your role, yourself in the role of a student and come up with um, things that you thought worked or things that you thought didn't work um, or any ideas um, of how we could switch it up. You ready? I am. And just that, that copy that we gave you, a handout, that's how Stan travels outside the classroom, our RV, which is parked outside the President's Hall. Um, and you, he's, it's up and going. You're more than welcome to go in and look at it. Um, it was a $25,000 renovation that we did through the President's seed money a couple years ago. And it's going to be open over lunch, too. They gave us permission to pull up because it's raining. All right. Now we need to get it bigger for you and hopefully <laughs> Okay. Uh, 
the idea? You think they pretty much played into the roles? How did you like Stan's buddy? It's okay Stan, they're here. That was his buddy all the way through. Um, I gotta tell you a little story when he was in the ER when he was ready to leave he bends down to Stan and he said it's okay I'm praying for you. It's okay. So that's 15 minutes introduction to Stan. That's all he had. And he played that right through. And then our family you saw the one nurse crying, that was one of my nursing students. We found out later that not the same kind of incident, but the same kind of scenario, her son was actually like that. 
and it evoked a lot of emotion, which we didn't realize, and she actually started to cry because it brought up a lot of feelings from her own son, which we didn't realize. So anyway, so Susan um, is going to see what uh, things you thought went well and what things um, you saw that might be better. I know this video is a little short from, from two hours, but it does give you kind of that from the very first when he down, stands down, to we've got him in the helicopter and they're, we'll be taking him away to uh, some specialized treatment. So what kind of thoughts do you have about uh, the scenario to the video that um, play out well for the real world, um, real life, or what do you have that maybe we need to alter to make it more realistic? I actually had a question about the software that runs Stan. Um, it runs off of a Mac, and this yeah. it is programmed through Medi. Yeah. So, um, and is there is there an option to is there availability? I guess of, um, like do you have access to to support any kind of technical support to give Stan certain behaviors that you may need? We have a good hundred or so programs that are programmed in okay. and then we still have the ability and we've had several of us have had the basic training that we can write a scenario oh, to cool. match what you want and there's they have extra classes that they'll be happy to, to, okay. they can go to um, for that for more advanced but it's very easy to use interface if I want to change his lung sounds I click on the lungs, choices come up, and I can kind of go on the fly if I need to, okay. which with this, you kind of, because you don't know how things are time-wise going to lay out. What's the name of the software again? It is all through Medi. It's Muse. It's Muse. It's the whole They own it. Package. It's Muse. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, they just were bought by CAE, which is a Canadian company, Canadian Aerionic something, which are the ones that do the big um, flight simulator things for Boeing and all that. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that, that marries their aerotics uh, and the, um, this side, the medical side. It's pretty exciting. It's yes. Yes. Some of their students will go out in the field with uh, mock lunar rovers and mm. Mm. Mars orbit and live in these things for two weeks at a time. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm wondering if you drop this kind of situation where um, they're not only remote, but health is really <laughs> Oh, yeah. You could do to point. Now, he was, and like anything that comes that changes the way we practice and care for patients, he was designed and tested in the military um, for his durability. Um, so he's pretty durable. Now, the AAE has Caesar, who is even more durable. Um, and that's the Canadian version of him, kind of. So it'll be interesting to see how they come together and what kind of product they come up with because. Um, uh, you know, it's just the only, it's going to evolve. But yeah, you can put him pretty much anywhere. He is temper temperature sensitive in that you don't want it too cold and you don't want it too hot. So you've got to watch that because of his, his internal um, hardware. And, you know, we're, we're done with time, but um, you have that break. We'll be more than welcome to show you how he changes. You, you can take blood pressures. You can, his eyes react. He's up and going. Uh, you can listen to his lungs, you can listen to his heart, we can open him up if you're a, an engineer, you just like things that are kind of cool, um, we can open his chest and you can look in. Um, he's a great recruitment tool for high school kids, especially those that aren't sure what they want to do and they think engineering is kind of cool. We just open him up and they're like fascinated So, with him and uh, we're fascinated with him too. We like him a lot. Anything else that you would do differently? I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty critical. We sell people without gloves, you know, those kind of things. And our moulage, we like to be better. We're, we're more critical, but. Um, I attend too much to his um, chainsaw loop. They did a good job, I thought, on the stabilization of the neck. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see anybody attending to the potentially seriously bloody wound. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had said it was controlled and they packed it, but probably it got cut out, some of it, because we took two hours and condensed it to ten minutes. But yeah, yeah. Anything else? I think one thing I learned after the summary was that I thought it took forever to, from the accident to when he got in the helicopter. I said it took an hour and eight minutes. 
and the Lifeline people were just incredulous and that's a great time. You know, you should be happy with that. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Seems like a long time to me. And then um, definitely we're in a rural area. We got the plaid shirts. We come on an annual field trip to Penn State and this is a funny story. Actually, we're walking with a group through the IT building and I heard someone going the other way saying, what is this, a plaid convention? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> one of the other non Monalto forestry students, so <laughs> they blend right in, in the woods. So for those of us from Weyerhaeuser country, up in the northwest, we're totally normal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the plaid, the camo. The <laughs> exactly. Anything coming. else? If not, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, I do have business cards. If you have any other questions or you want to think about doing something or do whatever, we'll, we're glad to talk. So have a great uh, rest of the day.